First off, um, this webinar will be recorded, um, and so uh, the recording will be posted to our um, our Boundary Systems YouTube channel, and uh, you can also view the recording there after after the webinar as well. Um, now the uh, so yeah, we'll just I'll just go ahead and dive in dive into the presentation here. Um, also, by way of of I guess you'd say housekeeping before we get started. Um, everyone is currently muted on GoToWebinar, and so if you have a question, uh, there should be a GoToWebinar control panel on the right-hand side uh, where you can open that up and type in your questions, um, and, and you hit send. Those would appear over here, and I can see those and then, and then answer them. Um, and so as, as I present along in the webinar, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to type them in there and um, and at the end of the webinar, we'll address address all those questions in a Q&A at the end. Um, now, just to just to confirm as well and make sure that we're all all good to go, um, if you can hear me and you can see my screen, can you hit the you know raise my hand uh, button on the go to webinar control panel, just so that way I can confirm that you know, okay, yep, I see one hand raised, two hands raised, okay, yep, that's wonderful, yep. Um, Okay, cool. Um, thanks for thanks for that. Um, okay, so now we'll go ahead and um, and dive in dive into the webinar content here. Um, so first off, um, th so our agenda here is we're going to talk a little bit about you know uh, boundary systems and who we are, um, and then next we'll dive into you know talk, just a very very quick introduction on Keyshot. Um, I know I know a lot of a lot of people here probably, you know, are familiar with what Keyshot is, uh, but we'll just we we'll just do a quick introduction anyway, and then we'll dive into, you know, what the Keyshot configurator is. We'll show a live demonstration, and then after that, we'll do some question and answer, right? So just by way of introduction, um, we are Boundary Systems. Uh, we are a product development uh, consulting company, and we, we look to help you know, our customers achieve higher levels of success um, by offering solutions to any of their product development challenges. Um, anything in the product development space, whether it be you know, um, you know, CAD data management, CAD design and consulting, simulation, rendering. Uh, we we partner with uh, with software vendors to make sure that we have the right solutions uh, to offer to any of our partners, uh, to any of our customers. Sorry, um, and so we are um, a Keyshot or I guess a Luxion uh, reseller and partner, and so that means we're able to bring you know a lot of resources to bear when it comes to rendering to to help out our customers. Right. Um, now, by way of, um, of a, just a quick introduction on Keyshot, um, so Keyshot is a photorealistic rendering software that allows you to create um, uh, photorealistic right, uh, images uh, in minutes with a lot of predefined or pre-configured materials that are you know, flexible and easy for you to also manipulate and, and, uh, and redefine or customize. Um, very accurate lighting, and it's all real-time. Uh, CPU based ray tracing so real time that means you know um, you don't have to spend all this time setting up your model your rendering scene and then hit preview just to wait for a couple minutes to see what the preview is going to be and then you realize you don't like the preview and then you want to go back and change it up again um, Keyshot always renders what you're going to your preview you know in real time for you so that way um, you can easily see you know what exactly it is you're going to be be creating, you know, uh, at the end. And so, for example, this um, this render image right here was uh, created by um, a 3 3D artist um, Rodrigo Soria, and this was available on uh, on the Keyshot forum um, um, webpage. But again, these are this is just an example, one of the many kinds of things you can you can create with Keyshot, right? Um, so. We'll dive into the Keyshot Configurator. Now, first, what is the Keyshot Configurator? Well, the Configurator is um, an interactive you know, uh, presentation view in Keyshot 7 that you can use to um, create, you know, to, to, to interactively show different aspects or model variations or material variations um, of a particular model or, or, or design, 
right? Um, and so this could be used with, you know, interactive design reviews, right? So whether, whether it be, you know, we're having a design review session with, you know, um, engineering or with marketing where we're trying to decide, okay, you know, do we want to use a certain texture versus a different texture or do we want to paint this item white or black or gray or blue or red or green? Um, you know, do how does, you know, how do the 16 inch alloy wheels look like, you know, um, in, you know, this body trim car or versus a different trim? Or how does this car look like if we put, you know, just the base stock wheels on it and, you know, we're painted gold, right? Those kinds of what if decisions where you're changing the geometry, right? You're changing materials, finishes, textures, and you still want to take a look at, okay, what does the final render look like? Uh, those are the kinds of things that the Keyshot Configurator allows you to handle very, very easily. Uh, so it's an incredibly powerful tool. Uh, now, before I go along, I'll also mention right here, the Keyshot Configurator is only available on Keyshot 7. Uh, so it's one of the new features that they've released. Um, it's incredibly powerful. Um, and it's something where, you know, um, uh, um, you know, yeah, it's just incredibly powerful and I can't wait, can't wait to get into it here. Um, the, the other thing is Keyshot, uh, uh, the configurator is also a pro feature as well. So um, I don't, it's not going to be available with just the base HD license. Uh, you will need a pro license of, uh, of Keyshot in order to access this. Uh, but anyway, so I'll go ahead and dive in here. So you can view model and material variations, you know, and, and then use that in, for example, interactive design reviews to, you know, view your model um, in its rendered state very easily. Um, the other thing you can use um, uh, Keyshot, you know, uh, so I guess in this in this slide we'll talk about, you know, who uses Keyshot or what can Keyshot be used for, in, at least in terms of the configurator here. And uh, the configurator uh, can be used in a couple different scenarios or contexts, right? One would be, as I mentioned earlier, right, making design or marketing decisions, right? So, you know, you're presenting to, you know, um, uh, marketing people, you know, engineering people, um, either internal stakeholders you're presenting to, you know, suppliers or vendors, right? For example, in this case of this car, um, you know, I want to tell tell my the, the, the vendor that's going to paint the car, hey, when you paint it, I want you to make the white stripes, you know, go along the length of the car, right? So now clearly there's not going to be any miscommunication if they ship us our first order of the car and I see the stripes painted over the door, right? That's not what we showed them, right? Um, so you can start to use this to show those kinds of ideas um, and then to start, you know, bouncing ideas off of people and uh, interactively, you know, uh, making decisions, you know, in a conference room, for example. Uh, so sometimes that requires, you know, an expert Keyshot user to actually set, you know, uh, actually use the configurator. Um, the other, the other context where you could use use the configurator though is with uh, is in interactive consumer experiences, right? So say for example, you know, um, I'm I'm starting up, you know, a new company where we're making cars, right? Um, and I pr I'm presenting at a trade show and I want customers to get a feel for how they can customize their car, the different kinds of wheels and colors they can put on their car, and how it's going to look like in real time, right? Well, I can set the configurator up on a touch-friendly monitor, touchscreen-friendly monitor, right, at a trade show, and now I can just come to them and say, hey, you know, you can pick whatever wheels you want, right, in whatever color you want, um, and the car model will immediately preview to, you know, the, 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 whatever you have selected and show you what, it, what it's actually going to uh, uh, um, look like, right? You can also change the lighting environment and see how the car looks like, for example, with just studio lighting or versus if it's put in an outdoor scene where you have, you know, lots of scattered light, right, versus if it's going to be like in a forest somewhere, for example, right? Um, you can change the lighting in scenes. You can change the geometry. Hey, what if we, you know, had a different body trim, for example, right? You could easily ask those kinds of what if decisions and have customers play with your model themselves, right? Um, and again, that, so, so, so that I think is incredibly powerful to where, you know, at least for the configurator aspect of things, you know, a Keyshot novice could use it or a Keyshot expert could use it, but it's all, you know, the main goal is to help convey ideas, right? And to help translate, you know, um, 
what your product is going to look like um, uh, and, and be able to visually evaluate that. Right. All right. Um, now, how does the Keyshot Configurator work? Well, um, the Configurator works using a combination of at least three different um, uh, items inside of Keyshot 7. Now, all three of these are new to Keyshot 7. Um, all three of these each deserve their own webinar uh, because they're so powerful. Um, but we'll go ahead and, um, and you know, at least talk high level on all three of these and, and show them as well. So the first is model sets. Uh, so model sets replaced what historically in Keyshot 6 and older was um, scene sets, right? And in this case, now model sets allows you to basically show, you know, model and geometry variations uh, very quickly and very easily uh, within your same scene, right? So you can, you know, show or hide different variations of geometry and still be able to get the complete picture of what, what you're looking at, right? The next is going to be studios. Um, and so studios in Keyshot 7 replaced what was you know, historically view sets in Keyshot 6 and older, um, and also then took that on steroids, basically. So it's view sets, you know, um, amped up to a much higher degree because um, historically with view sets, you could combine a camera and an environment into a view set. That's what it controlled. But now in Keyshot 7, a studio controls not only just your camera and environment, but also your model set um, and also your material as well, right? Um, so, for example, you know, I could save two different model sets, you know, one where this car is, you know, all the doors are closed like this, um, and another model set where the driver door is open, right? Um, and then I could create a studio that says, hey, show me the, you know, driver door open uh, model set with the, you know, 16 inch alloy wheels, uh, the gold, you know, paint on the on the car with the black stripes um, and, you know, in a, in a in an outdoor scene for lighting. Right. Um, you, so you can combine, you know, environments and camera variations inside of a studio. You can also combine, which I don't have in the slides here, you know, um, model sets and also um, and also, um, uh, so yeah, also materials as well inside of that studio, um, and combine all of those together. And so, it's really, really powerful. And uh, I'll show you show you how those work as well. And then finally, you can also um, it also works using what uh, Keyshot Seven now calls multi materials, right? Um, and multi materials are basically uh, interchangeable materials that you can apply on one object, right? Um, so historically, you know, if I wanted to show this car in blue, red, and green um, with Keyshot, I would always have to whenever I apply one color, it always erases the other. Right. Um, and then if I apply, you know, green, it'll erase the red that I just applied earlier. Um, but now with Keyshot 7, I can create what's called a multi-material. And what that tells Keyshot is, hey, this car could be either of those three colors, blue, red or green. And so don't swap out. Don't erase one for the other. Don't destroy one material when I apply the other. But keep all three of them as interchangeable variations of the same of the materials on the same object, right? And so now it's just as easy as selecting either one of those three to have Keyshot then show you the fully rendered model with, with that particular material, right? So those are the three different, you know, um, items that Keyshot combines into, into uh, um, the configurator. And so now we'll go ahead and uh, jump into a live demonstration here where I show you um, what the configurator actually is and what it does and how you also will set it up as well. So um, hold on a second here while I uh, switch screens. All right. Um, so let's see. All right, so right now you should be uh, viewing um, my Keyshot screen over here where I have, um, uh, what's it called, a red toaster oven uh, shown inside of my view. And um, 
Okay, so I'll uh, actually I'll cancel this save reminder over here. Um, and so right now this is Keyshot Seven. First off, um, we'll go ahead and uh, and say I'll close my my materials tab over here on the left. You'll notice first off the interface looks you know very similar to Keyshot Six and older. Um, uh, Ninety-nine percent of it looks very similar. Although there are one or two, you know, differences that we're that we're going to talk about. So the first is going to be with uh, with the model sets, right? So for example, in the case of model sets, um, this replaced what used to be scene sets, uh, and now what this is is um, you can basically customize, you know, different views or variations of uh, of an object, right? So for example, in this case, uh, this is a toaster oven, and we're trying to you know, compare, you know, one version where the handles and um, the knobs over here are, are filleted or rounded off. So that way, you know, it has sort of a smooth, smooth appearance to it. And another version where they are uh, chamfered, right? Um, and if I sort of, you know, zoom into this, this area of the model right here, I'll sort of show you what's going on. Um, so this default model set here, for example, um, combines all three of those uh, combines all of those geometry variations together, right? So, for example, um, if I go ahead and um, so right now this handle over here looks like it has a fillet on it. If I go ahead and hide the filleted handle, you'll notice underneath that is a chamfered handle, right? Um, so both variations are shown in the same location, right? Um, likewise, over here where we have the knobs. Um, if I go ahead and um, you know hide the filleted knobs, you'll notice the knobs over here now are you know chamfered, right? Um, and again, if I go ahead and you know swap the the visibility and I hide the chamfered knob, now I can see these knobs over here have a fillet on them, right? Um, so both the filleted and the chamfered versions are all you know inside of Keyshot in the same same locations. Um, and so now if I want to, you know, customize a certain a certain view, say, for example, I want to show the model where, you know, I have um, my toaster oven with, um, with uh, let's see, say, you know, the chamfered um, handle and the, you know, rounded or the filleted um, knobs, right? I can easily come over here and create a new model set, right? And now I'll just I'll just call this one here webinar, and we'll say we want to show the toaster oven right um, with the chamfered handle and the filleted knob. So I'm going to hide this one here, and I want the chamfered handle, so I'll hide the filleted you know knobs, uh, or I'll uncheck that and I'll hit OK. Um, and now that uh, that model set is uh, is automatically created, and that's what's currently being shown right here, right? Chamfered handle, filleted uh, knobs like that, right? Um, the other thing about this is um, is uh, so let's see here. So I can also then show a preview of this particular uh, model set and render that inside of here. So for example, you know I'm going to center this back. Um, and uh, let's see here, over here on the preview, um, I'll specify over in my render thumbnail settings, I can tell Keyshot to center and fit the model whenever it's rendering the preview over here, right? And so you'll notice this preview of this webinar model set currently is sort of zoomed in like it was earlier. And so now if with center and fit active, um, I can come over here and tell it to re-render the thumbnail, right? And now it centers and fits the object like that, and shows me the a thumbnail of what the what the model set looks like, right? Um, and so you can have that, you know, thumbnail to sort of, you know, give you an idea of what it is. So you don't have to always click on every model set just to see, oh well, you know, what did I configure within that model set, right? Um, the other thing you can do with with uh, with model sets, at least in this case here, is you can also show multiple model sets together, right? So, for example, you'll notice some of these model sets just have, you know, um, knobs, right? And some of these just have, you know, um, handles, right? And you're wondering, well, you just can't have a floating handle, right? Um, and also, this guy over here is just a toaster without any knobs or handles. 
but now I can combine them together by selecting multiple model sets to now show you know a particular version of the knobs, the handles, um, with you know the toaster as well, right? Um, and so that's how you know model sets you know play with um, you know with each other, and and you can combine all of them together like that in order to to sort of show different different variations of the same geometry, right? All right. Uh, the next concept we'll talk about is uh, the multi-materials, right? So. And in order to do that, uh, I will, you know, just quickly import a cube here into the scene and, you know, show my example on, on this, this cube over here. So um, right now, I'll just, you know, zoom into this guy temporarily and we'll focus on this cube right now, right? And um, let's see, I'll pull back my materials window. So say, for example, I'm going to, you know, assign platinum, for example, as a material to this cube, right? Um, the normal Keyshot interface, as it also used to be uh, in Keyshot 6 and older, it was just going to be this right here. Um, and say if I want to see this and how it looks like in gold, right, if I go ahead and apply this version of gold to it, that wipes off the platinum that I just applied, right? So if I customize that platinum, if I added a texture, if I change the roughness, all of that customization is going to be lost, right? Um, if I created that plat that you know new material from scratch and applied it onto this here without saving it to the library, all of that is basically you know wiped off as I apply another material onto it, right? Um, and that's you know a certain kind of keyshot behavior. But the other thing you can also do is you can turn on this bucket right here, this button called the multi-material. And when you turn on that button. Keyshot opens up a certain bucket region right here for you where you can now start to drop in different variations of, uh, of what the material could be. So say for example, I'll take the same platinum and now I'll drag and drop it into that same bucket. And so now Keyshot knows this cube can either be platinum or gold and it's as easy as clicking between the two you know, buttons to show which material uh, uh, it's going to be. right? Um, the other thing about about this um, multi-materials window is that um, you know you, first off you can drag and drop materials from your Keyshot library into that multi-materials section. So say for example you know you have your own custom or your company specific materials already saved that you prefer, you can reuse those library materials and just drag and drop them in. The other thing you can do is you can also, for example, you know, create a uh, new material. So this here is just a new plastic material. So it just, you know, creates a new material in your multi-material window here, um, assigns it to plastic, but you can then go ahead and, uh, and start to, you know, change this. So I could, for example, say I want this to be paint. Um, for color, I'm going to choose, I don't know, say, for example, I'll aim for something close to a yellow or um, yeah, I'll call you something like that, like that. Yeah, close to yellow. Um, and I'll say, uh, yep, okay, that's going to be my paint. I'm going to add a little bit of roughness to that, right? So I can customize the material on the fly and also still apply that in my multi-materials section, right? Um, the other thing I can do as well, which we don't have that in this in this example, but I'll I'll let you know, is you can also uh, duplicate an existing material as well, right? So for example, in this case, I can pick on any of these materials, create a duplicate of that, and then I can modify the duplicate in any way I want, right? Um, and then the the third piece of it is you can duplicate a material and link the textures together, right? So say for example, I have this plastic material that's driven by a particular image-based texture, you know, call that, you know, image A, right? Um, I can duplicate this plastic to, you know, plastic number two, right, material, and I could change that, you know, material a certain way, but both of those can still be driven by the same image texture A if I use this, um, this you know, duplicate materials and link the textures. So that's just a quick, you know, quick primer into um, into multi-materials and what they do, right? Go ahead and delete the cube over here. Um, let's see here. So I'll do that. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and delete that cube, and we'll go and we'll go back to our um, toaster, right? And then the last thing to show would be uh, studios, right? So studios are um, now. So you pick on. So there's a studio button at the top over here inside of Keyshot, and uh, when you select on that, it'll pull out either this tear out or it'll pull it out at the bottom of your materials window right here. And a studio is basically a way for you to combine a camera and an environment just like historical view sets used to be. But you can also now add in there the option of a model set and a multi-material as well. Right? So say for example I want to create a new studio. Right? Um, I'll call this again webinar. Right? Um, and in this webinar studio, I'll say, hey, I want you to use you know, this particular viewing camera that I'm looking at the model from. Um, for the environment, I want you to I want to change it to say, for example, um, the, you know, a different um, in-scene environment with you know warmer lighting, right, on my model. Um, and I could also say, for example, I want to show you know my webinar model set that I had uh, I've initially you know pre-configured, right. Um, and if I want to select a particular multi-material, I can go ahead and select that as well. In this case, I'll you know leave that unchecked, right? And now I can combine all of this here to a studio, uh, have that saved, and now I can switch between you know certain different studios where you know on the one hand you know something is configured versus a different you know item in another studio where it's a different model set and camera and environment and multi-material, right? Um, now, particularly for the configurator here, what I usually like to do with uh, the studios is I just like to configure a studio with just an environment alone, right? Nothing else, no camera, no model set, just the environment alone, right? Um, so in this case, for example, um, you know, this studio that's created here, it just has one, the environment configured and nothing else, right? These first three over here. Um, and so that's what we're gonna go with. We'll leave that for now and I'll just delete that webinar studio um, so yeah and then we'll, we'll, we'll just leave this as is so right now we've talked about studios we've talked about model sets we've talked about um, uh, multi materials now let's combine everything together into into a configurator right and to do that we'll pick on this configurator wizard button over here right and the configurator wizard is going to start off from uh, this overview section here um, and it asks basically, okay, what do you want to present? You could either show model variations or material variations or both, right? Model and material variations because we want to change the, co the colors and also the geometry as well, right? Um, and then it's going to ask, okay, well, what's the parent model or what, what's the top level or the start that you're going to you know, initialize or start with? And I'm going to use this baseline model set that I already created over here. And that just contains, you know, um, the model with without the handles and the knobs, right? And again, you'll notice this, um, the configurator wizard is interactive. So as you select an item in here, um, the, uh, the, the real-time render window will preview to show you what item that, what item you're currently selecting, right? So it's not just a blind selection where you pick something and you hope for the best, right? Um, and you can also, you know, you can either select existing model sets or you can select geometry from, you know, uh, the scene uh, or in this, or either from the scene tree or from, you know, um, from the scene if it's shown. In this case, um, everything I have is in model set, so I'll just pick a model set over here. Um, next is going to be components. So what components do you want to, uh, to accessorize or to vary or, or to change? And in this case, I pick, you know, the four different, you know, um, model sets for my filleted handle, chamfered handle, you know, and my knobs as well, filleted and chamfered, right? Um, if I have any other model sets for different material, uh, different components, I can select those as well, right? Um, next is going to be, you know, uh, component groups. So now it's asking, okay, what's the relationship between, between all these different, um, uh, what's it called? components, right? So just to sort of show an example here, I'm going to delete both of these component groups um, and I'm going to recreate those again. And so for the first one, I'll say I want this to be the handle. 
yep, component group. Um, and in this handle component group, I'm going to, you know, associate that with the chamfered and the filleted handle components that I already told Keyshot about, right? Now, you'll notice there's also an option for none. It's always going to be that, uh, where if you don't want to, you know, associate it with anything, but in this case, that doesn't apply. So we're just going to keep it at those two. Next, we'll say um, knobs as well, right? Um, is uh, is the next um, component group we're going to create, and in this case, we're going to assign you know the knobs to to that component group as well. Right? And now that we're done with that, we can hit next at the bottom here, and now it's asking for material variations, right? So what what you know um, materials do we want to swap out or change between all of these different items, right? Now, if you already have models or parts defined with multi-materials, Keyshot will automatically read in those multi-materials, right? Um, if you don't have them already predefined or you want to apply them on the fly, um, you can also do that, you know, by either selecting on the material in scene or by dragging and dropping into this box as well. So, for example, I could drag and drop... Um, Let's see here. So I'll say for my yep for my chamfered handle for my accent for for this accent over here, I want to um, you know drag and drop this guy in right. So that way we want to have a gold version right. Say for example we're making you know we're making um, uh, we're making a version of this toaster for the you know elite one percent that you can purchase on Amazon for you know ten thousand dollars. It's going to come with you know gold plated you know handles. Um, and, you know, who knows, we'll sell maybe, you know, five or ten of those, right? Um, so, yeah, I can either drag and drop it in on the fly or it'll read in existing, you know, material, uh, um, uh, multi-material settings that I've already created ahead of time. Next is going to be my studios, right? And so here I can select, you know, which of those studios I want to create or, or, or use inside of my um, my uh, configurator. In this case, I'll select all three of those studios. Um, in this layout version, in, in this layout over here, um, there are a couple different modes that you can use for the configurator. We're going to use a touch-friendly mode in this case. Um, and I'm going to say, let's go ahead and render the materials. Now, rendering the materials is important uh, because what that's going to do is it's going to render thumbnails of all those different materials we have, so that way in the configurator, those thumbnails are visible and it shows you, you know, uh, what those materials are going to be, right? Um, and all these different settings here, you know, allow you to configure or control, you know, the size of, of the different items inside of the configurator. Um, but in this case, we'll just leave it as, at the default settings for now. And um, the summary window just sort of shows you a summary of, you know, what what all, you know, you, what the options are that you've selected, right? So, and again, within this summary window, you can still select, you know, different, um, different uh, uh, what's it called, items. So I could still select uh, this guy here and say I want the chrome handles, for example, versus the gold plated handles, right? You can still change and select all those different items within the summary or you can hit this presentation mode, which now pulls in the full Keyshot configurator, right? Um, and so everything I've shown in the webinar so far is built up to this point where you're now looking at the full Keyshot configurator, right? Um, and so now, what does the configurator do or what does it mean, right? What's the hoopla about? Well, it's because now I can pick on, for example, a particular geometry variation and I can say, hey, you know, right now that's a chamfered handle. Let's show the filleted handle, right? Um, and on that, I also want to see, for example, um, you know, uh, I want to see that in, in, in this chrome color, right? Um, and for my knobs, on my filleted knobs, I also want, um, yeah, I, I, I want to show the chamfered knobs. I also want to see that, you know, in chrome as well, right? Um, and I can do that and sort of, you know, start to show this, you know, very easily right here 
Um, if I want to show this in a studio lighting, I can pick on the studio environment to change the lighting. And now you'll notice how there's a lot more contrast and the lighting is less warm and, and it's more neutral as compared to, you know, if I show this in a cool, you know, in scene sort of lighting versus, you know, uh, in a warm sort of lighting, like in a room. Right. Um, I, so I can start to change around or vary, you know, um, the you know lighting of the scene, my geometry. Right. And also um, my materials as well. So say, for example, for the body of this here, you know, I want this to show, you know, either, you know, like, you know, in this sort of gray color like that um, or versus I wanted to show, hey, how does the red option look like? Right. Um, all of this I can show very quickly and easily using using the configurator here. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so that basically is, is the Keyshot configurator in a nutshell. And this is really powerful, again, because, you know, say, for example, we're at, uh, at a trade show or a conference, right? Uh, a customer walks up to me and says, hey, you know, I really like my toaster oven to be black, right? So, you know, we're, we're going with a certain theme in our kitchen and a black appliance would fit best, right? Well, hey, we can configure that. Um, what option would you like for your handles? Would you like a filleted handle with a filleted knob, right? You can pick on those. Hey, this is how it's going to look like. Um, um, and you could also then configure all of that. With, say, for example, do you want the gold plated version, right? Do you have an extra couple grand to throw at it? Or do you just want to go with the everyman's version and just have those with Chrome, right? Like that. Um, you can start to then combine and, you know, and, and vary, you know, what options you have, right? Um, and then the other thing, for example, you can also do is, you know, so for the, you'll notice over here for the handle and also for the knobs, the materials are, the gold material is only available for, you know, the filleted version of the handle and the knobs, right? Um, if you switch to, um, well, actually not, yeah. So for example, if you switch here to the chamfered version of the knob, right? the gold version isn't available, right? So you could have, you know, something where it's like, hey, this particular item is a limited edition. It's only available with these certain options. With other options, it's not available, right? Um, you know, we could also have this in a design review where, you know, a marketing exec, you know, from behind the room says, hey, you know, how does this look like, you know, if the toaster oven is configured, it's, it, if it's a white toaster oven, um, with, you know, with the cool light gray, you know, uh, options for, for the handle and the, um, and the knobs, right? Well, I can very easily say, hey, let's, you know, switch here to light gray for the handle, right? Uh, for my filleted knobs, we'll say that's going to be a cool light gray as well. Uh, for the body of the toaster, I want that to be white. Um, although that, yep, definitely is not white. Uh, more than likely, I modify the, mater the material um, before yeah, before this presentation here. So we'll just go go tweak that a little bit. Uh, we'll say, oh, yep, I know what's going on. Uh, so switch back into my configurator here. And yeah, so the material is white, right? But uh, it depends on, you know, the lighting it's in. So in a warm studio lighting, right? So the, the white reflects a lot of that warm light as compared to in a cool, cool setting, right? Like this. Uh, and so I can start to show, show those differences, right? Um, now, in something like this here with the design review, now we can start to see or make, make an idea, for example, that, you know, hey, you know, um, the labels, um, or of the of the dials around around this uh, this hand this uh, toaster over here, those labels are all uh, what's it called? They're all white in color, right? So for example, if I pick on the black version here, you'll notice those labels are white, right? Um, and so note to self: for the white option of the body, you don't want to have white labels because then you know they're not visible, right? We want to switch those and make those black labels, right? Um, and again. Oh, let's quickly see how do the labels look on the white body if they're black, right? That's as easy as, you know, uh, escaping out of out of the configurator. And I can just come over here and modify this material very quickly. Now, I'm going to do this um, in the material graph. And uh, let's see, I'll just say from my, um, 
white option. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'll connect this guy here straight to the color. Um, and that shows up like that. Okay, so what if I do this and I um, just connect this to that? Okay, yeah, there we go. So now I can see uh, through when I connect it through a color invert channel, um, that switches the colors, and now all of this is now black like that uh, for the labels because that's controlled by this texture map for the label over here. Um, and so now I will go ahead and close my material uh, graph, switch back here, and now I could say, hey, you know, this is the, you know, white version with the black labels. And for any other color of the um, uh, toaster, it's going to be white labels, but for the white version, it's going to be black labels, right? Uh, and again, the more you let it, you know, sit, uh, the more KeyShot will then res up and refine the image um, of what you're looking at. Um, and again, you know, four or five seconds of it sitting there, you know, now you're getting a very realistic appearance or of what your toaster oven is going to look like in the final design, right? Uh, so again, that sort of shows, you know, from a from a you know start to finish, you know, what the KeyShot configurator is. Um, how you would create it, what are the different options that it combines together, and how you can then use this, you know, to present your products either to customers, stakeholders, um, yeah, and, and, and the like. So at this point, we will uh, open it up for our questions and answers. Uh, so if you have any questions, uh, once again, you can type them in the questions panel of the GoToWebinar control panel, and uh, we will take a look at those and, uh, and answer them live over here. Cool. Right. So, um, so the first question was sort of asking, um, you know, can this, you know, can this, is this something that you can, you know, put on a, you know, maybe like, you know, show on a tablet or like on a website or something, um, to where you could have people interact and play with this, you know, on uh, on a mobile device. Um, that is something that. Um, that um, is still is still you know under under. So I'll put it this way. The um, the key the configurator currently works in a way where the machine that you're showing the configurator on has to be rendering the uh, preview window live, right? Uh, so for example, my computer right now is using seven CPU cores to render this configurator image that you're currently seeing here, right? Um, and so uh, whenever you get into you know um, whenever you get into web showings for example on your on your website or on a tablet typically a tablet is not powerful enough to render something like this you know very quickly and interactively now this is the first iteration slash installment of uh, of the configurator so um, I, I can tell you as sort of as a preview of coming attractions one of the things that Luxion is looking at for you know the next release or the next release of the configurator is to um, is to create something where maybe you can pre-render all those different options and variations out as a key shot XR, right? Um, and then when you're using the configurator, it's showing you the pre-rendered images, right? Um, yeah, and another another you know uh, option that Keyshot is also looking at, just so that way you're aware in terms of a preview of coming attractions, is potentially creating something where um, you know, you can export the configurator as a small executable file that you can then send to a customer or a vendor, right? So say, for example, you know, I'm a 3D rendering artist, right? Um, I render this toaster oven for my customer, and now I want to present my work to them, right? They don't know how to use KeyShot. They're completely clueless on KeyShot. But I technically can then export that, you know, to export the configurator, to an executable file that I send to them. And then that that executable file will probably either, you know, install a light version of KeyShot, right? Uh, that will only show the configurator itself full screen. 
um, and they can then preview the configurator, click on the different options, and start to walk through, you know, my model and my setup, you know, um, uh, interactively live on screen. Now, those are a couple of the ideas that, you know, Luxion, I know we're bouncing around as to uh, what they want to do to improve and to add on, add on to the configurator here. Um, so again, this is something that's not just going to be static, but you know, um, these these um, um, designs are going to improve and change as time goes on. Okay, at least how the configurator looks like. Um, so next, uh, so now I notice uh, someone you know has their hand hand raised. Uh, so if you have your hand raised. Um, I wouldn't be able to turn on the uh, uh, turn on the mic for you to speak up. So you want to type your question in the go to webinar control panel, and then I can I can uh, I can you know address those. Uh, next question here says you know is there glass in the window? And uh, the answer to that yes yes in this model here there is there is glass glass in that window. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and the person then elaborates and says we have trouble with uh, transparency or clear plastic in front or, or behind behind the product. Um, I can I can reach out to you one on one and, and handle that question offline. But um, just to show as an example here, if I um, you know double click on this window right here, you'll notice inside of Keyshot there is, that's a reflect you know, refractive glass material that's applied. On that on that window, right? Um, so again, that um, yes, there is glass in that window, um, and and that then affects you know how how um, the object is shown. Uh, all right. Um, the next uh, next question over here says using live linking. Um, what do I need to know about configuring inter inter interchangeable parts in the CAD system? Um, okay, so I think that question is referring to the fact that um, Keyshot can, you know, um, you can export geometry from your CAD system. So Creo, uh, CATIA, SolidWorks, NX, whatever CAD system you have, um, to Keyshot, and and when you use the plugin, uh, you can then automatically update um, materials, or you know, you can update the geometry from your CAD model to key shot using the live linking functionality uh, and so now you're asking you know what do you need to know about configuring the interchangeable parts in your CAD system um, so what I would say for that is um, for the parts you would want to have um, all of your you know um, uh, all of the parts in your CAD system uh, shown right when you're when you're exporting it to Keyshot. So, for example, in this case, um, if I, you know, get out of the configurator here, um, in my scene tree, you'll notice. Uh, let's see here. I'll switch just to the default model set. Um, I'll collapse everything and then expand it out, and you'll notice, you know, everything is shown, both the chamfered and the filleted versions. They're all shown in place, right? Um, and you'll notice in this case here, I have all of them sort of on the same, you know, hierarchy level, um, just so that way I, it's easier for me to see and select, hey, I want to hide, you know, a particular version and just show a different version, right? Um, so you, you would want to have your model tree or your assembly tree look something fairly similar to this, where all those different options are shown and available and are on the same level and then when you import that into Keyshot you can then have the option of just turning off you know option A or option B um, to show uh, or turning on you know option C or D to show a particular version or variation of um, of your model okay, okay um, so let's see what other questions are are available All right, so it looks like um, it looks like we are out of um, questions, or at least yeah, yeah, we've, an we've answered all the questions that are that are currently currently available here. Um, so we'll go ahead and, um, and and sort of I guess wind down wind down the webinar from here. 
Um, and so the um, last thing I'll just mention here is, you know, I'll put up my contact information. Um, we're going to, again, we're going to post a recording of this, uh, of this um, uh, webinar to our YouTube channel. And if you want, um, if you want the files that I used in this Keyshot Configurator um, uh, example, so you can play with that yourself, um, we can also make that available as well. Uh, you can, you know, send me an email, um, or you can send an email to, you know, sales at boundarysys.com or marketing at boundarysys.com, and just ask for, hey, the files that you know Shay used in uh, in the Keyshot Configurator webinar, um, I can, you know. Yeah, I can send that to you. Um, and uh, again, if you have any technical questions about Keyshot, you know, uh, my contact information is on the screen. Uh, if you have any sales related questions, so, you know, how much is it? You know, do you guys offer training in Keyshot? Yes, we do. How much is it? When, when, what's the availability of your training schedule and things like that? Um, those would be questions that Steve Seymour would be, you know, more applicable to handle. Um, and again, yep. Yeah, Thanks so much for attending. Uh, we are here to make sure that you know you can use you can use Keyshot more efficiently um, um, and render and create your product you know designs uh, uh, much quicker. So if you have any any other things we can help you with, please don't hesitate to reach out. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate you being here, and we'll catch you um, next week on another version of Boundaries uh, Go To Webinar Wednesdays. Cool. Thank you. Bye.